Hello guys, welcome, welcome to the very first day of Service Dub Prep Live right here with me, your host, Caitlin Bird. I'm really, really excited to be hosting this with you guys tonight. And as I'm doing this, I think, oh hi, you might, this is Kalis. He is uh, one of my birds. They are currently flying around. Um, they've never been clipped before. So you might see them popping in and out here and there during the session today because Originally, to tell you guys a little bit about myself, I was actually a in the zookeeper field, and I've worked with them. Hello, Jennifer. Nice to see you here. And being in the zookeeping field, you, know, you work with a lot of different animals. And when I introduce myself to people, I usually say, you know, I've worked with everything from alpacas to zebras, which is <laughs> very true. Um, but we are not here to talk to you today about the zookeeping stuff. We are here to talk to you guys today about educating you what is a service dog. I'm going to talk about the differences between a service dog, an emotional support animal, also known as an ESA, and a therapy dog. So I don't know if you guys know the differences between these two types, these three types of assistance dogs, but the very first one that we are interested in is the service dog. And service dogs are allowed, each, each type of these dogs are allowed certain places, and some of them are not allowed certain places. They also all have different jobs to do. So for example, a service dog is there to help provide support to a single person, okay? And when they are providing support to the single person, they often are helping the person live their daily life. Now, you may have heard me talk about during the lives last week, you may have heard me talk about the uh, mobility assistance dogs, right? And mobility assistance dogs help people move and stay active. There we go. And they help them throughout their daily life. So if you need a dog, if you need to go up and down stairs, if you need to um, get up off the floor or prevent yourself from falling. There's a lot of different um, disabilities out there such as dysautonomia and POTS where um, you can potentially fall over sporadically um, depending on certain conditions being met or unmet, right? So that is what a service dog does. Now service dogs take anywhere from one to two years to train fully right? Usually the very first year of having a training dog, I mean, having training a service dog is training all the basic obedience in all the possible areas that they could possibly need. And generally the last bit of the training of your service dog is going to be training for specific tasks to help you in your everyday life. Each dog is not going to be learning the exact same task because those tasks are specifically tailored to their owner, okay, or um, to their handler. So to kind of tell you, just try to get you into the habit of the verbiage that uh, service dog handlers use, I'm gonna be using some of that and kind of explaining it to you along the way. So when you're a, a service dog owner, you're a handler, and when you guys are together out and about, you are a team, okay? So there's handlers and there's you and your dog, which is a team. So um, that being said, service dogs are allowed anywhere and everywhere, right? As long as it's safe and doesn't cause harm to the animal, okay? Within a reason. <laughs> the next uh, assistance dog that you guys need to know is called an ESA, also known as an emotional support animal. The requirements for an emotional support animal are that it needs to have at least basic training and they are not task trained. They provide emotional support to the person, but that is not a task, okay? So emotional support is not a task. It does not help you physically get around and you know go anything. You don't need specific training for a dog to be emotional support, right? You just need the basic obedience. Now, um, there is a lot of confusion with people's ESAs because oftentimes people think, okay, is like certified now. He had his training. I have my doctor's note, which you do require a doctor's note for an ESA. You do not need a doctor's note for a service dog. 
okay? You don't even need to register your service dog because the governing body is the ADA and the ADA does not require you to have a certification. Now, I know that blows a lot of people's minds, but there's actually a, quite a few trainers in my area that provide certifications for service dogs, but they do it under their own name, okay? It's not a whole governing body. Yeah, it's a, it, they only do it to make people feel more secure that your dog has been certified, okay? It's, it's a little scammy, it's a little slimy, and it, but it makes people feel comfortable, all right? And um, again, you can just Google the ADA requirements online and there's absolutely no requirement to have them certified because you can train your dog yourself without having to go through a certification school because what, what is that? I mean, how does that, that hurts disabled people if they had to, right? It costs more money, which, you know, not everybody has and it's pretty difficult. So that being said about service dogs, let's continue on about ESX. And ESAs tend to cause a lot of problems because people are not educated on where ESAs are allowed versus where they are not allowed. They tend to blur the lines between ESA and service dogs, which, and they are two completely different things. ESAs, in order to train them for basic obedience, maximum, they'll probably cost you 500 bucks to go through basic and advanced obedience, depending, you know, on how much training they need. Every dog is a little different, okay? Service dogs, the organizations that train the really good ones, like Service Dogs for the Blind, they are a really nice, top-notch organization. If you're a blind person, they those dogs, calculated cost for two years of training is $60,000, okay? And if you're really looking between the difference between an ESA and a Service Dog, it's that price point. For sure, right? So $60,000 dog versus a $500 training dog, right? So there's a big difference between dogs that need to know tasks and need to be absolutely perfect in public versus ones that just need to behave okay, all right? There's a huge difference there. The very last, oh, so <laughs> I didn't, I forgot to go over. ESAs are not allowed everywhere, okay? Let me say that again, because this is a very important concept. ESAs are not allowed the same access as service dogs. They are not allowed in restaurants. They are not allowed in Walmart. That's a big one. <laughs> they are not allowed in Walmart or anywhere where you shop for food. ESAs are allowed, however, in three things. Planes, trains, well, transportation, <laughs> and housing, okay? So planes, other modes of transportation, and housing, as long as your dog is well behaved and potty trained, all right? That is the law requiring for the ESAs. And that's it. You're not allowed in Walmart. You're not allowed in the hair salon. You're not allowed in any other public place for emotional support, okay? They travel with you. They live with you. That is it. Um, but again, service dogs are allowed to do all the above and do not require certification. They just need to be, well, really well behaved in public um, because they need to be focusing on you and waiting for the next response, like seizure alert, right? People who have seizures need to have dogs that are very reliable so that they can help them and save their lives. People with ESA dogs do not, okay? The very last uh, dog that people sometimes get confused is the therapy dogs. Now remember how I said service dogs serve one person. They are trained specifically to help out a single person. Therapy dogs provide emotional comfort to large groups of people. So think about the dogs you see that go into hospitals. Those are therapy dogs. Think about uh, when you've heard your neighbor take their dog over to a recent place that's been hit by a hurricane to go help provide some emotional support to those people. Maybe they lost their pets. That's a therapy dog, okay? And therapy dogs for their training is kind of in the middle of the road between a service dog and an emotional support animal, right? Therapy dogs have a higher threshold of standards that it does for ESA dogs. 
There are organizations such as Therapy Dogs International, and they are a group that have, they set, they set their own standards, and they go out as a group to, you know, geriatric homes and uh, schools and things like that. They do education, they provide therapy for large groups of people, okay? And therapy dogs, you know, again, it kind of depends on uh, your individual dog if you want your dog to become a therapy dog. And the cost is going to be somewhere in between an ESA and a service dog, okay? And again, service dogs are about 60 grand. Um, <laughs> depending where you get them from and how, uh, how much it costs to house them, feed them, care for them, how much the trainers cost, et cetera. Now with those particular programs, sorry, the bird is distracting me. With those particular programs, there are a lot of people that get rejected from a program that provides service dogs for free, right? Because these programs are charity organizations, they get their funding from donors, and if you don't neatly fit into the boxes that these people put forth, you don't qualify for a service dog, which I've actually run into quite a few people that just had one little thing off and it's really not that big of a deal, okay? So they'll come to me to help them train their own service dog from scratch. And um, you don't need to hire me, right? You don't need to hire me to train your own service dog. Would you be better off hiring a professional to guide you through the way? Absolutely. Now, let me see here. I wanna look through my notes real quick just to make sure I'm not skipping anything. Um, do, 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 do. Yep. Ah, okay. So you, I mentioned tasks to you guys a little bit earlier, right? So I wanted to go over the seven types of dogs that offer um, different tasks, tasks for people. Because I know we have a large variety of people in this group, and I want to go over each and every type of dog that you would need to train to help you with what you are working with. So we went over mo mobility assistance dogs, right? They can open doors, they can retrieve items for you, they can help pay a cashier for you, they can help you stand up, sit down, prevent falling. They can even go find help if you do fall down, and they can keep you steady to prevent you from falling down. So that's a mobility assistance dog. The next type of dog is an alert dog. And alert dogs can alert you to what just before you're having a panic attack. You can, there are certain signs that people do that will tell a dog, oh, this means I need to pull the person's hand away from maybe shaking too much, right? Maybe that's what you do before you have a panic attack. Maybe you start breathing heavy. And the dog knows that when you start breathing heavy, you're going to about to have a panic attack. And your dog will remind you <laughs> to start chilling out. They can even alert you. And alert dogs are very, very broad in the range that they come in. They can even alert you to a change in your blood sugar, whether it's too high or too low. Because some people have blood sugar that erratically changes. And you can actually use the sweat from your hands for the dog to pick up on the scent and tell you, hey, check your blood sugar, you need to fix something before something really, really bad happens, all right? You can even tell alert dogs to dial 911 if something terrible happens or, you know, you're, in, you're somewhere where you're having a blood sugar crash and you can't physically get to something, right? Lord forbid that really bad emergency situation could happen and you need to have your dog dial a 911. Now, you may be wondering, how do you do this? They actually have these little fault key fobs where you can teach your dog, you know, you can put it somewhere on your wheelchair or on your person or have it on the dog and teach the dog to dial, to press that button when you need 911 to come and get you. It's really, really cool. And of course, you can also have a dog that, te that you can teach to go find the nearest exit to take you out. Some people have disassociated episodes and they, can't, they, they don't know where they are. So you tell your dog, you know, we need to get out, go find the door, and the dog will guide you to the nearest exit to get out, okay? The next type of dog is a hearing dog. 
pretty obvious, right? For people who are either hard of hearing or are deaf, you can have a dog that can alert you to when someone's calling your name, when your telephone rings, when there's a car that's about to back up and people are yelling at you to move out of the way. Uh, I actually had an inquiry about a month ago where someone is looking to start the process because that very thing happened to her, where there was a she was standing in the parking lot, chat like chatting with one of her friends in sign language, and neither of them realized that there was this car backing up and people were yelling at them to move out of the way. And then that person actually backed up so much he was he was kind of a jerk. Okay, he was kind of a jerk where he tapped her. And she freaked out because she had no idea. She thought he was about to run him over. Okay. And, and of course, they kind of apologized afterwards once they knew that she was deaf. It's just not a good situation to be in. Um, let's see. We talked a little bit about seizure response dogs. You can, of course, again, help. You can also train the seizure dogs to uh, um, have someone, like, bring someone over to help. So you can train a dog to bring someone over to help you out. You can train a dog to have you wake up from a seizure, to stimulate you, to touch you, to nose you, to lick you, whatever it is that you need in order to wake up. You can teach a dog to physically move you if you're in an unsafe place having a seizure. You can also, well, such as in the middle of the street. So the next dog is autism support dogs. Now, these dogs are amazing for young children. Um, there's a lot that you can do. Like, the, the sooner your young child gets a autism service dog, the better off they're going to be growing up, in my opinion. Because I have seen kids learn and figure out and be confident enough to start speaking to other kids in their classes about their dog and they start to become more social and they make new friends. And it's, it's just such a beautiful thing that, you know, if you have the opportunity to either start training or get an autism service dog for your young child, I would jump on it because what do you got to lose? Okay. Sometimes they do um, tether if your child is off runs away, but there's definitely a weight limit on that tethering. I wouldn't be <laughs> tethering a large child to a service dog, okay? All, you, just the small ones. And you can teach the dog to stay still um, for a smaller child so that they do not run away, okay? The next, okay, we have two more to go. We have allergy detection dogs and psychiatric service dogs. So allergy detection dogs, you can teach them to sense um, single or multiple allergies in the environment and to alert the handler when they're present. You can give an item to a dog, have them smell it, and they can tell you, yes, it's good or no, it's bad. And that's actually really good if you have severe allergies. Um, excuse me. And the packaging, you know, sometimes there's stuff hidden in things that's not even in the pack that doesn't say it on the packaging. So that's a lifesaver. Okay, this is again, this is all very life saving things and things to help support people, which is why it's really important to <laughs> educate you guys on this stuff. Because a lot of people I feel don't mean to do harm, but when they take their poorly trained ESA dog that barks at a service dog into Walmart, which happens, I, it happens all the time, all the time, and they just don't know any better, right? And you're inadvertently potentially hurting the person with their service dog, because if they have a seizure and your dog barks at this dog that's trying to do their work, you know, bad things can happen. All right, the very last one is psychiatric service dogs. So these dogs can assist people who are suffering from depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, they can be trained to sense changes in your body when you're about to have a panic attack, which I mentioned earlier, when you're about to have a flashback or an anxiety attack. You can train them to remind you to take your meds if you have a poor memory. They can do something called deep pressure therapy, which can help calm you down. 
And of course they can interrupt any self-harming tasks that you, that things that you would do. And the rest of the week I'll be doing lives at noon. But during these live streams, I'll be talking about how to pick out a breeder and what protocols they should be using for their puppies. Because when you are wanting to train a service dog by yourself, you need all the help you can get. And the breeders need to be doing certain things with their puppies. Sorry, Titan's coming again. I hope you guys can hear okay. It can be very loud sometimes. Okay. So you need all the help that you can get. And breeders need to already be doing a lot with their own puppies. So the program that I recommend breeders to follow, <laughs> it's just birds everywhere today. <laughs> My apologies, guys. Um, because if I leave them in the cage, sometimes they just chirp a little bit louder. Um, so I'm trying to keep everybody quiet and happy right now. So I recommend you guys find a breeder that practices puppy culture, all right? This is a specific program and protocol that people, uh, that breeders follow. And breeders who follow the program teach their dogs how to be happy in a crate. Okay, because if you're doing that by yourself, it's going to take, you know, if you have never done it before, it might take a month or more for you to do. But if you have a breeder that knows how to do it, they come to you pre-crate trained, they come to you pre-potty trained, they come to you already knowing not to jump and to stay sitting when somebody approaches. And they're also worked on food aggression issues, which they can have with between other dogs or people. So you are already getting almost a pre-trained dog when you choose a breeder that chooses puppy culture, okay? And again, I'll be going more into detail with that another, I don't know guys, like you need to see this. Um, these birds, listen. Do you guys ever just get little helpers that like to help you out? Well, those are my two little helpers. Um, anyways, so yeah, that's where I'd want to start you with. Save up now, look into breeders, look into what kind of breed you would need, and feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you discuss, you know, what the process should look like for you, okay? All right, so let's see. How much more do we have to discuss here today? What a service dog is, oh yeah, we did psychiatric, awesome. What a service dog is, what a service dog is not. Service dogs are not emotional support animals, okay? <laughs> if there's one thing I really want you to take away from this today is service dogs are not emotional support animals and emotional support animals are not trained for tasks, okay? Emotional support is not a task. Any dog, any animal can do that. All right. Do, do, do. Ah, really important for you guys to know too. I touched on this earlier, but to reiterate, there is no National Service Dog Association. Do not get scammed by paying fees for an online card and certification invest because there is no governing body. It's just over the ADA, all right? So I have a little bit of homework for you guys. I have a couple questions for you and you're going to Take, after the live stream, you guys are going to process this on your own. You might even want to write this down. So first, already you guys are starting to think how a service dog can help you. First question I want you guys to answer is, what do you struggle with day to day? Make a list, right? Make a list of the things that you struggle with. And then I want you to answer this question. My ideal service dog helps me with blank, okay? Name at least three things, at least three things, all right? Name what your dog will be doing for you and how that will give you more independence, all right? So that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you everybody so much. Oh, and Amy's here, awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, this will be available for replay in the group. So if you missed a part, you can, it'll be posting back onto the group very soon and you can rewatch it from the beginning. And feel free to invite your friends here. If you have people you think can benefit from learning more about service dogs, invite them to the group. I'll be going again, I'll be going live again tomorrow. 
and we can have a good chat on there. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.